Hi everyone, I'm Melanie and today we're going to be talking about the Rocket Yoga closing sequence and how we can make it adaptable and best for us, not just personally but on any given day depending on how you're feeling. So this starts a set of postures that are inversions because your hips are over your head and they're actually really quite fun to do. So it starts off with a shoulder stand, which some of us might not have done since we were in primary school gymnastics. So I'm gonna give you some um, tips to get into it. So when we're going into a shoulder stand, one of the most common mistakes that I see is trying to get your feet up to the ceiling from here. So people lift their legs up and then they go, and it's really hard, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to rock back, take our feet past our face and then open up through the hips. So essentially your hips are going to go this way and then you're going to squeeze your butt and push up and that's going to help us open up at the top. So when we start seated, we rock back. When our hips leave the floor, we tuck our elbows in and our hands support our lower back. So we go past, past your face, push up and open up your hips, squeeze your butt, pull your quads up, suck your belly in, and we're here for three or five breaths. Do your best to push the back of your head into the ground, and then keep working to see if you can get yourself any higher. Now the higher you are in this position, the easier the next pose is gonna be. The next pose is plow pose. We might take one leg over the top, and then the other when we're ready, and then release the hands all the way out. From there, we've got the option to bend the knees for ear pressure pose. So when you're in ear pressure pose, the idea is you don't wanna hear anything else. So you're gonna take your knees down to the floor, but you're also gonna take them to squash your own head. <laughs> yeah? So these three postures come in sequence, shoulder stand, plow pose, and then ear pressure pose. Now when you're there, we're thinking about not panicking. So for some of us, it gets a little bit panicky when you're upside down, when your knees are near your face. So you wanna make sure that you're just being steady. You're not gonna be able to breathe deeply in these shapes. You've got too much pressure on your chest. So you're just gonna try and keep those shallow breaths going um, to help you whilst you're upside down. When you're coming down, you come out of it slowly, take your time and roll down. So those three postures, again, we rock up to shoulder stand, squeeze the butt, push the back of the head into the ground. We take one leg over, then the other leg over, release the hands for plow pose, and then ear pressure pose. We bend one knee, we bend the other knee, we squash our head, and then we start to gradually roll back down again. So from there, after we do the roll down, we have a bound headstand. Now I'm not saying that anybody at home should be learning how to headstand on their own. And there are a few things we need to do to build up strength before we start handstanding and headstanding. So to set this up, you're gonna interlace your fingers and then the gap between your elbows should be the width of your shoulders. A good way to check this is if you put your hands on the floor and your forearms down and give yourself a cuddle. If you can comfortably wrap your hands around your triceps, your elbows are in the right place. Your elbows are too wide if you miss. So if you can't give yourself a cuddle properly, then your elbows are too wide. Another good way of checking is to do what we call in gymnastics, kissy thumbs. So your thumbs are close enough to just have a little kiss, they go down, elbows follow suit, and then we interlace the fingers and push down. A good preparation pose is dolphin, and we're gonna be working on that in our sequence this week as well. So from here, all I'm gonna do is tuck my toes and hover my knees. This is gonna let me know whether or not I'm strong enough in my shoulders to be pushing away from the floor and supporting my body weight. It's not a very attractive position, but it's a good one, okay? When you're thinking about where your head goes, one of the most common problems that we have is people think I balance on the top of my head, therefore I'm gonna put the top of my head down onto my mat. But that doesn't allow for the little bit of roll that happens as you lift your knees off the ground 
and start to stack your hips. So as we're coming up, my hands are bound, my elbows are shoulder width apart, and when I put my head down, if I put my head on the top of my head, I'll show you here, if I put my head on the top of the head, as I took my toes and lift my knees, as I start to walk my bottom higher, you can see I'm starting to roll onto the back of my head. This is not where we want to be. So when we put our head down, I almost think about your hairline, roughly, depending on where our hairlines are, roughly your hairline down, and then you'll find when you took the toes, lift the knees and hover, you roll onto the right part of your head. The other thing is, there is an equal amount of weight on your head as there is in your elbows and your shoulders. So you're still pushing down, the weight's not just going through your head. The palms of your hands are gonna to stay together. We're not gonna give our head a cuddle. If I'm here with flat hands, I can just forward roll out of it. You wanna use that tight ball as a braking mechanism. So that as I put my hairline down, my hands are here as a brake. I can't physically push over this. Whereas if I open my hands, I'm giving myself room to roll over the top, which is not what we want to do. So, practice in your headstand. The first thing we're going to do is make our base tight fists. Elbows are shoulder width apart. The hairline goes down, the toes tuck, the knees hover. This is stage one. Stage two, we're going to walk our feet closer to our face and see how high we can get our butt. Then from there, I want you to squeeze your belly button all the way back to your spine. And then I want you to push down, stage three, with your elbows to the floor. So this is as if you're trying to move your shoulders away from your ears. Okay, now we start to have a play with the weight. Can you pick up one foot? Can you pick up the other foot? Can you squeeze one heel to your butt like you're doing your crow pose? Can you squeeze the other heel to your butt? Are you still pushing through your shoulders? Can you have a little push when we get here through the toes and back again? Through the toes and back again. Coming down, having a little break. So again, just the same as our crow pose, we never want to be in a situation where we're kicking into a balance. If you're kicking into your balance, you're not in control of it. We want to be able to lift into it. So the first position that we're going to do is a tuck shape if you feel like you're ready to come off the ground. We don't jump, we don't kick. So we make our fists, our palms stay touching, elbows shoulder width apart. Top of the head is getting ready to roll. Tuck the toes, hover the knees, we walk ourselves in. Now from here, I'm going to bend one knee and then I'm going to squeeze that heel to my butt. I'm going to roll through the other toe and then I'm going to squeeze the other foot and then maybe swap legs to come down. At the point where I think I'm not going to be able to lift up, I have to actively push through my shoulders in order to get that bit of lift that I need. It's very, very tempting to lift one leg in the air and kick aimlessly. That's not gonna build any strength and it's not gonna build any balance. So please do try your best to stay away from it. You wanna be able to hold a tucked headstand for at least 10 seconds before you even consider taking your legs up into the ether, okay? So, if you're someone that's practicing with me regularly and you know what we're doing, we're gonna be putting my head down, tucking the toes and walking in. From here, I'm gonna lift one leg. Don't mind which one, just your favorite. We lift one leg to the ceiling and then we practice that roll through the bottom foot, push through through the elbows at the same time. So that can allow us to lever ourselves up. We squeeze the butt, we press the knees, suck the belly button in and push through the elbows. Then from there, we pick a different leg to come down. We come down safely. And that's how we headstand. If you want to do a headstand against a wall, that's going to encourage you to kick. So I would always say practicing in the center 
will create an air, an air of caution that you need when you're going upside down. So making sure if we're practicing in the center, we're never kicking, we're always squeezing. And don't worry if you can't do it first time, these things take time. There's your bound headstand that goes as part of your closing sequence. From there, we have a lovely child's pose. So you've got an option to do a vinyasa or you can just have a chill. When we're in child's pose, our knees are wider than our ribs, which allows our ribs to sink down between them. From there, the hands go out shoulder width apart and we want the gap between your eyebrows down on the floor. And that's to stop us from frowning. And we just chill here and we've got steady breaths. From there, we make our way up and you have an option to jump through here or just swing your legs round. This is where we go into um, our full lotus. Now, not a lot of us can do a full lotus naturally. Most of us struggle to sit cross-legged when we get a little bit older. So if that's you, grab something like a cushion or if you've got a bolster, and it's gonna help us get on top of our pelvis. So when we sit up onto our cushion or our bolster or the edge of your couch, when you cross your, your shins, you're gonna be thinking about being able to tip forward. So if you look at the shape of my back, it's quite rounded, and then I'm gonna stick my butt out over my chest, and that's gonna help all of my hips ease down, okay? So when we are sat cross-legged, we wanna be sat up tall. If you're one of those lovely people that can just sit cross-legged, you just enjoy it. The next one is a half lotus. So you pick your leg that you think is gonna be best for it. You're gonna flex your foot. You're gonna hold underneath the heel and underneath the calf. You're gonna drop your hips backwards. That's gonna create space. And then we're gonna gently lift in. We're gonna try our best not to let our foot sickle to start off with. We're gonna to try to get that hip down to allow us to pull into the opposite hip. Once we're there, we flex the foot to keep our knee nice and safe. We want this opening and then we slowly lower it down so that we can sit in our half lotus. Maybe you've got a full lotus in you. Maybe you're one of those people that's been sat in full lotus the whole time I've been chatting. That's lovely. You have an option here to just chill or we can think about maybe leaning forward, getting a bit more of a stretch, or we can think about using our bundle locks to push off the floor. So this is the last push, the last hard thing that you do at the end of the session. So your hands are just kind of level with your thighs underneath your hips. You're gonna scoop your belly in. So we're sucking in and we're lifting up through the ribs. You're gonna be pushing down through your hands equal and opposite amounts of force, and you're gonna lift your bottom off the ground, okay? Now, if you're someone who's in full lotus, this is gonna be much, much easier because this foot is already on here, so your body's sorted itself out from the bottom. If you're in half lotus or if you're cross-legged, the chances are your feet and your ankles are going to stay on the ground. That's not a problem. In an ideal world, we would hold this for 10 breaths. Or we can cheat it and do 10, inhale, exhale, release. Again, inhale, exhale, release. And depending on what kind of class you've had, you might just not do that at all. You might just watch everybody else not doing it, okay? And then the last pose, the one that we work towards, Shavasana or corpse pose. So when we are in this position, our feet, our hip distance apart, we roll down, our shoulders are separated and our palms are facing upwards and we chill here. Now it's really tempting to leave your Shavasana out, but the whole point of adding your breath to your moves and doing all of the postures all the way through the sequence is to allow yourself to be able to lie still at the end. It's literally the equivalent of shaking your jiggles and getting everything out and then being able to meditate at the end, okay? So when we go through that sequence, that closing sequence one more time, it starts off with a shoulder stand, 
it goes over to a plow pose, it goes down to an ear pressure pose, rolls down, cross through, maybe swing those legs round, preparation headstand, bound headstand, push down, head down, toes tuck, lift, maybe squeeze in or maybe straighten up, coming down when you're ready, we take it out, we go into child's pose, forehead down, we breathe here and then from there we swing it round, we've got cross-legged, half lotus, full lotus, butt lifts and then shavasana. So we're going to be adding in our closing sequence to our rocket class this week, so I hope you enjoy it.